Hey, I uh, wanted to try vibe coding today and recording it in case it's helpful for anyone. Helpful for anyone. So what I was thinking of doing today is um, I just re-picked up trying to learn the ukulele from scratch. So I figured I'd see if I could do some vibe coding app from there. So I'm going to like really, really vibe this. So let's start off by just like seeing if ChatGPT can give me any ideas for now. All right, let's see what we got. An immediate feedback loop using the mic to detect if I'm playing the right chord. Play a two chord song in under 60 seconds. There's definitely something about practicing that I think would be helpful. Smart practice helper. All right, I definitely like something about practicing switching chord changes. I think that's uh, what I want to do. And one of the things I learned from playing the ukulele is that you can like learn to get the fingerings right for one of the chords and then for another, but then switching back and forth, you need to like be able to do that faster and faster. When I think about vibe coding and product managers, I think that we have a huge advantage. The way that product managers have been trained. The core work we do is we work with other people to make an idea come to life. And what vibe coding lets us do is it lets us take all of those product management skills that we're used to doing with other humans, other designers and engineers, and lets us apply that to um, an AI agent, something like Replit, and we can get those ideas out much, much faster. But it doesn't mean that we should throw away any of our core skills of like really thinking about what's the problem we wanna solve. Here's Replit, when you log in, Basically, like, give it your Google account. I've signed up. I think I'm paying $25 a month. Uh, you can set it so that it won't spend more than that. I don't know what the current defaults are, but when I joined, the current default was that it would just, if you used up more AI credits than that, it would just start charging your credit card. So do be a little careful. Don't let it uh, accidentally ring up a huge a huge bill for you. But I think however you start on Replit, you're basically, this is your, your starting AI. Just like, what do you want to make? So I'm going to go ahead and start talking about this ukulele app. So whenever I do vibe coding, this is what I, the process that works for me, is I plan ahead to have two passes. I'm going to make a draft app where I'm not going to think too hard. I'm, I'm not going to be that careful. And I'm mostly going to let, um, let the AI be a little bit uh, creative. But every time I learn a little bit and I'm going to keep going. So, you know, I learned from this ukulele app idea that if it's going to show me the chords, I do want it to actually show me a picture of what the chords are. Okay, so let's talk about what we want to make. I wanted to start with two easy chords. I'm going to try to start it off like, I'm going to maybe see how specific I want to be here. I'm thinking about, do I want to like, tell it what I want or how much do I want to not? This is where I think some of the art comes in. Start with easy chord changes at a slow pit pace. Listen, if you are getting them right, work up to faster changes. Uh, we want to work up to faster chord changes or difficult chord changes. I still often fix my typos, even though I know you don't have to. The Chord should show uh, which frets to press. All right. This is pretty little. Let's see what it does. So what I found with Replit is that it is so fast at getting me something that I like, I don't mind it getting it wrong the first time. I'm like, the practice that I'm trying to unlearn as a PM doing vibe coding is when I work with engineers, I'm so careful not to waste their time. I'm so careful to, you know, I've always thought of the product manager as someone who's making the most of an engineer's precious time. So I try to think through all of the corner cases, all of the possible options and which one really will be the best one that we want to go forward and implement um, and do all of this thinking before anything gets built so that I can really be speeding up the whole team. But here I need to sort of unlearn that and sort of train myself to just try something out. Don't need to have it perfect see what happens and then and then learn from there. So what Replit tends to do is it tends to make a UI only version of something where nothing's really being stored in the back end yet. Um, but it tries to like let you know of like, hey, is this kind of what you had in mind? I, I have noticed this thing where it tends to get very dashboard heavy, uh, which I guess some people like, but a lot of times for me, I'm like, I don't need so many summary stats. I kind of want to just like get into the actual code. But let's see what it has. Can I click around in this? Here we go. So I scroll down, current code, practice switching between these chords, the C major. This is a terrible illustration for whatever it's trying to tell me to do right here. So I'm not so happy with that. And then the F major. Um, and the reason this is terrible is that this is supposed to be on the third fret, but it looks like, assuming this is your top of your ukulele, the three should really be down there. The F major, there's a metronome, beginner, lyothal. So it's telling me kind of what it's going to do. 
I am going to go ahead and just approve the plan and start because what I found is that it's actually not too hard to fix things once it builds them. Um, and especially because this is our first pass, just like to see what it does. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and give it a chance. So over here, you can see this is just a visual preview, not doing anything for real yet. So while it's going, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's going on here. This, you can see there's sort of three tab areas here. This one preview is the tab open over here. Right now it's showing me just the pure visual preview, but pretty soon it'll switch over to being the working sandbox version of my code. Over here, you can see agent, that's the name of the chat bot. So this is, this is my main area for chatting. This was what I had typed into that original box. It was like my first starting chat. Here's the conversation where it's like, okay, great. I hear what you're doing. Here's my plan. Here's everything I'm planning to do. Here's some of the things I'm planning to do later that we could work on later if you wanted. And then right here is it's telling me what the current thing going on. So it's telling me which files it's creating as it's going through them. And then if you are more technical, um, and I definitely recommend, like my view on being technical as a product manager is that you don't need to have a computer science degree, but you should not be afraid of looking at the code, right? Because you know how to read a book. And so you should be able to like at the very briefest level, like understand, have, take a guess at what the names of files mean, have a vague sense of like the architecture of a web application, right? So we know that there's the web page that I'm looking at and that's on my like computer that I'm on right now or on my phone. Um, and it's connecting to a server on the back end, someplace that might have a database, might be storing stuff so that if I log in from my phone and I log in from my computer and someone else logs in from the library, that we can all be seeing all that code because we're all connecting to the same server. So over here, we're going to expand out this side area. And here is where you can see which files it's making. And they're going to match up with these names. So client source components, something selector is over here. Client source components. A difficulty selector. These are all in TypeScript and we don't need to know too much about what the code's doing here, but I'm guessing that this is the thing that lets you select the difficulty. So I'm guessing it's this component right over here and get a sense of like what HTML it's generating. Replit.md, that's what I was looking for. So this this is a file that Replit makes based on what I've said so far, that's sort of telling us the summary of what's going on in this app. And this would give us a chance that if we had a different way we wanted the chatbot to communicate with us, we could change it right over here. We could talk about our goals, um, we can get a general idea. This is pretty human readable. And if uh, there are parts of this that you don't know what they mean, you can ask the agent eventually like what they mean, why it's made those choices, if there's other choices to make. One thing to be careful about when talking to a chatbot is that I like to think of my chatbot as like a really, really intelligent five-year-old in some ways. So it's not, it's not really thinking and doesn't have a sense of like telling the truth and lying as the way that other things do. So you will, uh, at least the last time I tried this out, which was, you know, a few weeks ago, you will get the chatbot being like, you're absolutely right. I will check that. Now it should be working. And you're like, it's still not working. And there is no use berating the chatbot or like trying to force it to tell you the truth because it's just making stuff up. The same way that if you've had a toddler and you've watched them just like answer any question, just making it up, it's just making it up. It just happens to be very, very good at it. So it says the agent's ready now. Here's what it's done. It's worked for six minutes and it'll tell you even how much of your uh, like $25 uh, a month credits you've used. And let's see over here. So that's what it should be doing. So let's go back to our preview. Now it's no longer says it's a visual preview. Um, it has a really, really nice thing here where you can actually take a screenshot of the um, QR code to open it up on your mobile app. These are all temporary, so they, they disappear once we leave the workspace. But let's go ahead and see what's going on. So these cords don't look right is the first thing. So let's just see if we can get to fix it. And I'm going to try to like, when I'm doing this, when I'm telling us, I'm basically filing a bug report. So what I'm going to do here is try to file a bug report, imagining I'm writing this for an engineer who is a time zone away. And if I, if they misunderstand me, I'm going to have to wait another day for them to like get back to me. So I do want to be like kind of specific. And that's not because it won't get back to you quickly, but just because it really does need that like extra level of explanation sometimes. Um, here, I'm taking a small leap of faith that uh, something like a C major chord on a ukulele is an E is a well-known enough uh, fact that it shouldn't be a big problem for, uh, for Replit's AI to look that up and make sure it gets it right. So here's our C major chord that looks correct. 
All right, so it's made a terrible design decision to show it this way, where it's treating the very first row as an open fingering. And then this is one, two, and three. And I'm not even 100% sure if the F major one is correct. But at this point, I want to see if the practicing actually works. Question is, can it detect if I play? Not getting any sign that it's detecting my, my playing. Oh dear. All right. Is it currently listening to see if I played the right? Great. It's not. To add it, it needs the web audio API and then ask if it wants to add it. Yes. One of the things I kind of like about this is that it's kind of like a chatty engineer. So when I ask it like, hey, I want to actually like detect the chords. I, as a product manager, might have no idea how you actually do that, but it's just going to tell me along the way. It's like, oh, I'm going to use the web audio API. Here we go. I've created the detection fee feedback. Now I need to create a component, so like a UI component so I can show it. Now I'll add it to the page. So it's really fun also because I find sometimes as product managers, we have the wrong intuition on how fast something is going to be to build. Like something might feel really easy, but you don't think through all the pieces it takes. And so it's kind of fun here that like, Given that it sounds like chord detection is just something that's well known enough on the internet, it's pretty easy for it to figure out how to do that. It didn't seem to have to invent that from scratch, but it does have a lot of plumbing to wire through. It does have to actually create the page, create the component, put it on different places, adding in some accuracy stats you can see over here. Noticed its own TypeScript errors and it's going to go ahead and fix those. All right. So it did something really cool here. When you see this little box, this is when it made a checkpoint. So it says roll back here. So basically at any point in the future, if things get super messed up, I can always come back to this, this point in time here. Go give it a try. Listen. I got it. Okay, cool. So it's detecting the chords, which is pretty nice. And now I need it to actually connect those things together. And maybe what I want to do here is have it have you do the chord switches a certain number of times and then give you an accuracy. And then one of the things I kind of want to remember when I'm doing this version is I'm still here on my practice version. It's possible I'll iterate this into something really great that I end up like loving, but at some point, because I have just been starting from scratch and kind of making changes as I go, at some point I might just like not be happy with it and not want to keep iterating from where I am. And that's where I'm going to go back write out more of a PRD, especially what I want the UI flows to look like once I've figured that out through this exploration. Oh, I can see the focus practice button just popped up. Okay, let's give it a try. I just need to get an F major chord here. I might need to ask it to switch over the, the F chord. All right, that was a lot faster. Let's see if it did it. Did not update it. So you can see how this gets a little bit frustrating. Caching issues, hopefully. Oh yeah, let's give it a try. We want to make a few changes here. Let's see what we get. Asking it to fix two things in one go can be a little bit dangerous, but I don't mind asking it twice. And I sometimes would rather just get the ideas out of my head. Let's give it a refresh. All right, let's try it out. Twenty uh. times might have been ambitious here. All right, and we got a little bit of a chord results. So this page isn't quite right. So we're going to need to do some more. I think that's all I've got the energy to do for this one session, but that's uh, the one.